process of composition for myself varies depending on the, uh, the circumstance. But reflecting upon where I grew up, which is uh, Mount Isa, far northwestern Queensland, Australia, Kalkadunga country, the creation of a composition is a very unique and personal experience. And each and every one of us as composers and even as musicians, we are creating music in real time um, as an improviser or someone that is reading notes off a piece of paper. My process is quite simple, yet it can vary and be complicated as well. It's about, I guess, expanding your palette of sounds. And I draw inspiration from the landscape and from those old stories from my ancestors that were passed down to my forefathers and grandmothers and so on. And so you have an integrity to, to carry on through the cultural values that were passed down, through learning your language and an oral tradition and respect that goes with that. And so each and every one of those elements, kind of like a painting on a wall, you know, you paint this picture, but what, how do you put music to that? You know, you come in with an open mind. It's kind of like when you're uh, exploring um, the musicality of another instrument. What do you learn? You learn the foundations of that instrument. So my, my way of writing music is I'll have the did you do beside me and I'll lay down a did you do drone. It might be very simple and then I'll start harmonising vocally on top of that or I'll get the guitar and I'll start to, to record and improvise um, different uh, arpeggiated melodies and so forth and then I pick out the best bits then I notate that I still, to this day, um, formulate my compositions through that process of you know, the, the trees uh, moving out in the landscape and what sort of image and sound that can create to the, the animals flying over the, like the, the eagle flying over the earth and that looking back on the earth from that horizon view, you know, down on that red desert spinifex country and you find uh, I guess a melody through those old chants from the old people that were passed down through uh, ceremonial songs. The beautiful thing about music is it's always continually expanding your own uh, form of expression, especially when you have a conversation musically with your instrument or with your voice with another artist or a group or a band or a symphony orchestra. It's a matter of collaborating with different artists that help expand your palette of sound and your uh, experience and so it's a conversation that continually grows and you have this conversation musically with your instrument with someone from an, another musical style another concept so you're constantly learning and that's you know the evolution of what music is and how that doesn't become stale you know and you keep on building upon what's there in the history of music making and culture but also uh, maintaining the respect and the humbleness for the traditions of a particular culture. And so the language, um, language is a very important thing. Then as my music developed and I, you know, had these great opportunities to travel the world, I certainly saw the other side of that, which was the concert halls of the world um, from Europe to the Americas and uh, and of course we've got some great ones here in Australia as well. And how every space is as important as the musician playing the music. Because every, every space you work within, you create something, a spirit, a vibe, a sense of, uh, a sense of um, you know, belonging. And some, some places around the world, or even out in the bush, might not have ever heard heard or felt the vibrations of a particular instrument or a, a vocal melody. And so every time you travel, you're actually traveling with the spirit that, you know, you're leaving a spirit moment here and there. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. So one of the most powerful and resonating pieces that I've um, been inspired to write about is my own tribe, the Kalkadungu people. So this is a song I wrote when I was about 15 years old called Kalkadungu Yuru. It's about the passing of the culture from one generation to the next 
and how that oral tradition is passed down through generation and generation and how we are the future storytellers and the next generation are the future storytellers for their kids. I wrote it about how our tradition is an oral tradition with the stories you know, painted in the uh, wonderful caves, you know, both ceremonial caves and sacred caves as well as ones that um, are open to, to the public. And this song is about how the old people, our elders, sit around the campfire in the night, passing on the culture from one generation to the next, and how significant and how important that is as a cultural identity, to pass on our language and those Dreamtime stories, those song lines that connect with the rivers and the other tribes throughout Australia and also throughout the world, and how there are similarities. So it's around the campfire in the night, our uncles and aunties teaching us language, passing it on from one generation to the next. How the young billabilla, the young children, have to listen, watch and learn, and then they have to do that themselves. And um, I've had various um, uh, versions of Kalkadonga Yuru, uh, from an a cappella version to me co-writing a symphonic work with Matthew Heinsohn and it just demonstrates uh, the power of the story. So Kalkadung Yuru, there's been other versions with uh, jazz as well as um, dig fusion with this piece, particular piece that I play. Um, it, it just shows a linear language, a linear conversation with how the music can organically develop as it matures and I, as I mature as well as a human being and I'm open to explore collaborations, you know, learn from each other. It's very important. So yeah, Kalkadunga Yuru.